надо и для чего он еще это сделал. Для чего еще это Good morning. Oops. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Gulnara Khundova and I am representative of International Media Support. Welcome to the event organized by Expression Online Initiative. It's not working. Hello, hello, no. no. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? Hello, hello. Yeah, it's better. Hello, can you hear me? Good morning, hope everyone can hear me now. So once again, welcome to Expression Online organized event. Uh, human rights and internet governance must go hand in hand. We are terribly sorry for the delay. We, we had technical, some technical issues, problems this morning with the translation. And for this purpose, uh, we will have only consecutive translation this morning. I'm very much sorry about that. So if the translator will translate now. Sabahınız hayır olsun. Üzeri stili şey bir kadar cezişme oldu. Böyle git etme isterdik ki bizde böyle teknik problemlere göre sinkron tercüme teşkil edilebilmedi. Ona göre de ardıcıl tercüme olacak. So now I'm giving the floor to the organizers of this event, to Emin Hussainov, who will speak on behalf of uh, Groundbreaking Coalition Expression Online. Voila, Emin. In this sözü demeli bu tedbirin teşkilatlarına Emin Hussainov'a söz verecek. Buyurun Emin Hanım. Aziz konağlar, hoş geldiniz. Bakıya hamımızı salamlayırız Bakıya. guests uh, you're all welcome to Baku we'd like to greet you welcome you in Baku çok üzrlü üzr istedik ki belə bu cür texniki problemlər yaranıb lakin biz hesab edirik ki bu problem təşkilatı problemlərdir və biz istəməzdik ki belə olsun amma təəssüflər olsun ki həm burada çoxlu Azərbaycan tərəfinin iştirakçıları var ki ingilis dilində başa düşmürlər və ingilis dilində də Azərbaycan dilini başa düşməyən dostlarımız çoxdur və buna görə də biz qərar gəldik ki, bütün tədbiri tərcümə eləyək, həm Azərbaycan dilində, həm ingilis dilində. 
uh, I'd like to say that we are really sorry for this organizational pro technical problems uh, for because uh, this is uh, we are planning to do a simultaneous translation as there are some uh, people who don't speak Azeri some uh, we have some guests from abroad and also we have some Azeris uh, uh, local people who do not speak English language so that's why we have to do it with the translation uh, İnternette dərəkçilik forumu bizim için Azərbaycan için çok önemli tədbirdir. Biz hesab edirik ki bu forumdan vətəndaş cəmiyyəti və yerli və beynəlxalq təşkilatlar ə, maksimum istifadə eləməlidirlər ki, internet azadlığı məsələlərinə diqqəti cəlb edə bilsinlər və biz də son 6 ayda yerli və beynəlxalq həmkarlarımızla ə, Azərbaycanda ifadə azadlığın örülməsi üçün ə, çoxlu işlər görmüşük və bugün onları sizə təqdim edəcəyik. Internet governance is very important, uh, both for local, uh, both for civil society and international uh, community as well. So, uh, when it comes to this, this is uh, especially very important in terms of the providing um, uh, or the, in terms of the ensuring the uh, freedom of expression and freedom of speech. So, we have uh, uh, actually conducted and carried out uh, several activities in this way and we'll be, we'll be honored to, today to, uh, to present them to you. İnternet azadlığı her ayrı, ayrı insan hakları kimi de bu ve diğer ayrı ülkenin daxili işi olabilmez ve biz hesab edirik ki bu global bir azadlıqdır ve bu global azadlıq ve fundamental azadlıq bariyada biz bugün hamımız burada danışmalıyıq ve növbəti illere öz bağışlarımızı ve fikirlerimizi çatırmalıq ve susilə də heyecanlarımızı internet uh, freedom is, uh, cannot be actually taken as something internal matter of any kind of country this is a global and fundamental freedom that we all have to stick to and we all have to talk about and today in this event we'll be talking about this internet freedom bu qədər mən istərdim ki biz tədbirimiz gələn qonaqlar başlasınlar danışmağa çox sağ olun this is all from my side i would like to pass the floor to the to our visitors to our guest visitors Thank you, Emin, and uh, we are having here today uh, our distinguished guest, uh, Ms. Dunya Miyatovic, OSCE Freedom of the Media Representative. Dunya, floor is yours. Sim Dimel burada çok bir konamız var. Hanım Dunya Miyatovic, ATT'in söz azadlık söz azadlık üzerine numaralısı. Thank you very much, Gunara. Uh, I would like to um, greet you all. It's wonderful to see so many um, friends, colleagues present here. Uh, I also have to say that I'm um, quite surprised that we have these problems with technical problems uh, because all the issues I wanted to share with you, uh, it's quite difficult to, to, to talk for such a long time with this kind of translation. So I really hope this will be fixed as uh, soon as possible because it makes our event really uh, impossible to continue uh, if we have uh, these kind of technical problems uh, at the pre-event. Çok sağ olun Gülnana Hanım. Çok sağ olun. Teşekkür ederim. Geyd etmek isterdim ki doğrudan da bizim sizin hamınıza salamlıyorum. İlk evvel geyd etmek isterdim ki doğrudan da bu texniki problemin olması bizim için çok büyük çetinlikler törüldür. Çünkü burada danışmaq istediğimiz meseleler çoxdur ve bunun belə yani ardıcıl tercüme edilmesi ben deyirdim ki bu tedbirin devam etmesini geri mümkün edilecek. Ona göre de çok ona göre de ümid edirim ki bu çok en kısa zamanda bu problem öz hallini tapacak. Anyway, we are here at IGF to talk about communications developments in the world and the internet freedom. Uh, so I think uh, we would have all the possible means to be able to do so. Biz burada IGF'in demeli IGF tedbirinde katılırız ve internet azaltılığı bari danışacağız. Ve müddederim ki bu bari danışmak için bizim için bütün şerayet bütün imkanlar yararlanacak. Now going back to uh, our topic, which is extremely important, and that's human rights and internet governance, um, and uh, the note that they have to go uh, hand in hand. I could not agree more. Ve indi isə gəlin bir başa mövzumuza keçək. Mövzumuz bildiyiniz kimi insan haqları, insan hüquqları və haqları və internet azadlığıdır və bunlar bir-birini tamamlayan bir deməli anlayışlardır və bunlar yəni ki bir-birindən ayrı demək olar ki, bunları təsəvvür etməkdə çətin olardı. 
I would like to, to welcome, but also to thank the organizers, the Expression Online Initiative for putting together this event. Bu tədbirin təşkilatçılarına təşəkkür etmək istərdim, Expression Online bu tədbiri ə, təşkil etdiklərinə görə. The Expression Online Initiative is a consortium of number of freedom of expression organizations that I work with here in Azerbaijan, among them the Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety, the Human Rights Club, and the Azerbaijan Media Center. Expression Online, the other thing, Expression Online teşebbüsü ifade azaltılığı sahesinde çalışan bir neçə demeli təşkilatın konsortiumudur. Bunlar arasında demeli reportörlerin azaltılığı ve təhlükəsizliyi ve insan hüquqları mərkəzi ve Azərbaycan media mərkəzidir. I applaud them to have seized the opportunity the IGF in Baku offers to include human rights of the internet governance on the international and domestic agenda. Ve doğrudan da onlar algışlanmalıdır ki, onlar demeli IGF'in IGF'in demeli təqdimatına, gündəliyinə bu məsələni internet idare edilməsi ve insan hüquqları məsələsini daxil ediblər. I would also like to uh, pass the message from a dear colleague of mine, Frank LaRue, who was planned to speak today together with me, but unfortunately he could not join us here at IGF. Ve ben hem de çok yakın dostumuz Frank LaRue'nun salamlarını size çatıracağım. O da bugün bizimle burada iştirak etmeliydi, çıxış etmeliydi ama çok tersifler olsun ki ucayla bilmedi. Onun salamlarını size çatıracağım. That's why I will also, also touch upon several issues that are related to the U UN um, documents, recent documents in relation to human rights and, and internet freedom. From the beginning of the UN Internet uh, Governance Forum, it was always clear that Internet Governance should not only address the technical administration of this network of networks. Already in its June 2005 definition, the Working Group on Internet Governance stated, um, and I would like to quote here, but I know, uh, again, uh, I repeat, uh, this is taking an um, enormous amount of time to express everything I would like to say today here. Um, but uh, I, I will try to, to, to do it as briefly as, as possible, not to, to bother you uh, with too many details and very long uh, speech. Ve burada elbette ki, BMT'nin e, internet idaresi ve tekniki administrasiyasının 2005-ci ilde kabul ettiği bu cür bazı demeli e, materialları bu arada geyd etmək istərdim. Ve elbette ki, e, düzdüğün çalışacağım ki, kısa, mümkün kadar kısa danışım. Çünkü burada bir çox detallar var ki, yəqin ki, bunu e, vaxtımız çox gedir. Internet governance is the development and application by governments, the private sector and Internet civil society. Internet idare etmesi, demeli, həm vətəndaş cəmiyyəti, həm də ki, e, e, özel sektorun e, demeli, hayatına çox mühüm rol oynayan bir e, vasitədir. In their respective roles of shared principles, norms, rules, decision-making procedures. Verdikleri kararda, onların tədbiq etdiyi qaydalarda çox vacib And programs that taşır. shape the evolution and use of the internet. Və internetin idarə edilməsi məsələsində də düzdür, internetin idarə, idarə edilməsi məsələsində də bu cür xeyli sayda proqramlar həyata keçirilir. So what I'm trying to stress here is that İndi mən burada nəyi vurğulamaq istəyirəm? Ki, burada ki, istifadə that the civil society is an integral part of the internet governance. Geyd olunmalıdır ki, vətəndaş cəmiyyəti internet idarəçiliyin çox vacib ayrılmaz bir hissəsidir. As it is proven here today, but also at so ki, many other events around the world. Digər ümumiyyətli tədbirlərdə də bu artıq öz sübutunu tapı, tapmışdır. And it uh, at least indirectly Və mentions human rights when it speaks of shared ki, principles. Ölüştürülmüş prinsipler ve normal prinsipler var ya danışanda da en azından bunu vurgulamak yerine düşer. You are all very much aware on Sizin July 6, 2012, United Nations Human Rights Council Resolution uh, on the promotion, BMT'nin protection and enjoyment of human rights on the internet stressed the importance of the internet for human rights and vice versa. İnsan hüquqları sahasında daha da vacib rol oynaması için kabul etdiyi qatnamadan yakin ki, xəbəriniz var. 
So no matter how certain governments interpret these resolutions, it is very clear to all of us that human rights and internet should come hand in hand. I would also here mention the issue of security and human rights in general, including freedom of expression and uh, free flow of information. On many occasions, I'm told that certain measures by certain governments to restrict and to block and to filter are done in order to protect the societies. I'm hearing it's done because of national security issues. I hear it's done because of terrorism threats, child abuse, extremism, extremism, hate speech, and all of these that I uh, mentioned are legitimate threats for our societies. Legitimate uh, for any government to fight these threats. And in no way my office or me personally are um, trying to, to say that this is not legitimate right of any government to do so, to protect us from the threats that are very visible um, online, but also offline in our ordinary lives. But unfortunately, in my experience, in the past three years, in most of the cases, this is not really done in order to protect us from evil. It is done in order to restrict or to stop critical deferring voices in our society. Voices that are sometimes very provocative. Voices that are sometimes um, talking about issues that uh, we find um, irritating or do not like. Also voices that are challenging the power of the governments. But the answer should never be imprisoning, arresting, beating, intimidating and threatening these people, no matter how much we do not like it. I would go one step further. The internet today is not a virtual space or merely the digital world, as opposed to the real world anymore. But it is an integral part of our everyday life and touches upon all dimensions, dimensions of this life. Private, public, business, education, you just name it. Does of course also human rights expand to the internet. We cannot avoid it. Sometimes I hear do not touch it, it's just technical issue. It's nothing to do with, with human rights. Of course I disagree with this. They have also, uh, all these issues become part of our online activities. And in my view, online and offline is not dividable in the 21st century. But that is why in 21st century, we should also not arrest and intimidate people for expressing their online. views online. Not to mention offline. The resolution that I mentioned previously also goes further in this direction. And it says that the same rights that people have offline must also be protected online. 
eyni hüquqlar onlayn da qorunmalıdır. In particular, freedom of expression, which is applicable regardless of frontiers through any media of any choice. Ümumiyyətlə, media və yaxud da ki, digər heç bir sərhəd olmadan hər yerə tədbiq edilənir. The resolution also recognizes the global and open nature of the Internet as a driving force in accelerating progress towards development in its various forms. Müxtəlif formalarda internetin aparıcı və həll edici rolunu artıq burada tanınıbdır həmin qətnamədə. And calls upon all states to promote and facilitate access to Internet and international cooperation aimed at the development of media and information and communication facilities in all countries. İstifadə daha da təşviqi nöqtəyə nəzərindən çox vacib əhəmiyyət kəsb edir. Biz bilirik ki, bütün ölkələrdə hamı artıq bu qətnamda qeyd olunan sözlərlə hamı razıdır. İdeal bir dünyada bütün ölkələr Həmçində, burada qətnamədə qeyd olunanlar əməl də etməlidirlər. Onun üçün də bu sözlər, sözlər sadəcə boş sözlər kimi, çağıl üzərində olan sözlər kimi qeyd olunmamalıdır, nəzərdə saxlanılmamalıdır. Əlbəttə ki, mən bizdə bilirik ki, biz ideal dünyada yaşamırıq. Mən də onu çox gözəl bilirəm ki, ideal dünyada yaşamırıq. Amma yenə də bu sənəd, bu qətnamə Bütün vasitələrdə, bütün dövlətlərə, deməli, yaddarına salmaq üçün, bütün insan hüquqlarına hörmət olunmursa, onları bu, deməli, xatırlatmalıdır ki, onlayn, insan hüquqlarının qorunması və azadlıqların qorunması çox vacib həmiyyət daşıyır. Yəni, qətnəmə dövlətlərə bunu xatırlatmalıdır. The multi-stakeholder approach, the UN Internet Governance Forum is pursuing this inclusive approach. BMT Internet idarə etmənin deməli, digər bir yanaşması ondan ibarətdir ki, Including civil society and industry. Vətəndaş cəmiyyəti məsələsində bura kifayət qədər əhatə olunmuşdur. The term governance, no matter how it is interpreted by certain governments, already shows that it is not about regulation, but about joint regulation. Müzikləri, Discussions among the ITU towards the World Conference on International Telecommunications in Dubai show that there is a will of some governments to further regulate the Internet. Interneti yenə tənzimləməyə cəhlən edirlər. I also hear that it is not about human rights, it is not about content, but again, it is a technical issue. These discussions within the ITU are worrying, as they tend not to include civil society or even industry. This is also something that I'm going to discuss with the officials during the IGF, because this can affect our lives, short term, but not to mention the threat that exists long term. Uzun müddətdə də bu bizim həyatımıza öz təsirini göstərə bilər. Bu, deyərdim ki, çox da rəqdə yanaşmaq deyil. Məsələlər belə, özləri də bilmədən insan hüquqları məsələsinə, yəni ki, öz təsirini, mənfi təsirini göstərə bilər. The Internet is more than just an infrastructure for media and individual communication. The right to assembly online, for example, is something that certainly will become even more important in the coming months and years. Already my office and my colleagues from the OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights are promoting this right online as well. Bunun da həm onlayn, həm də offline bunun təşviqi ilə, tanıdımı ilə məşğuldurlar. İnternet, deyərdim ki, 
bir çox geniş insan hüquqları, məsələn, mühüquqları, məsələn, Bizim hüquqlarımızı məhdudlaşdırmamalıdır. Arqışlamasalar, onlar əlbəttə ki, onların sonu üçuruma gedəcək. Nə qədər də siz bunu məhdudlaşdırırsanız belə, nə qədər çalışsanız belə, tarix bizə göstərib ki, bizdə heç vaxt internet olmayıb əlbəttə ki, yayın məsələsi olmayıb, texniki məsələlər olmayıb tarixən. İnsanlar həmişə öz yol tapıblar. Always found a way to reach out for freedoms that were denied to them. No matter if we are talking about freedom of expression, freedom to assembly, or any other freedoms that we cherished and all the values that are very dear to all of us. Or any other freedoms that we cherished and all the values that are very dear to all of us. When it comes to human rights and security, I think these rights cannot be balanced. As the OIC representative on freedom of the media, I'm often asked to be balanced. Media azadlığı, məsələn, təmsilçisi cümlü bizdən xarş edilər ki, bunlar tarazlaşdırılmalıdır. And it is most of the time demanded that I do not look only at one part of the world. When it comes to protection of media freedom commitments and freedom of speech, Protection. And I agree in a way that it should not be focused only at one part of the world. I point my finger at the governments that are actually not complying with the media freedom commitments that voluntarily But if the journalist or a blogger or a social media activist is imprisoned, attacked, harassed, family threatened, dirty campaigns against the personality, certain personalities. I do not think I need to be balanced or silent. Because sometimes I'm also asked to use quiet diplomacy and not public statements in relation to point out my finger where the problem lies. If the journalist is attacked, there is nothing to be silenced about. We all need to join our forces and to have one voice in order to protect this person. Security matters and human rights, including media freedom, freedom of expression, and access to information, are interdependent, intertwined, and interrelated. We should all be thinking of new ways to connect and bring closer human rights and security in the 21st century. Because in no way, in no government, can really think that we live in a secure and safe environment if we are not able to freely express ourselves and there is no restricted free flow of information offline and online. But I also do think that we cannot freely express ourselves if we do not live in a safe and a secure environment. So these two should come hand in hand. Təhlükəsiz hissədə bilməli ki, ona görə də bunlar daima sıx əlaqəli olmalıdır bu iki məsələ. And that is why the Organization for Security and Cooperation, the organization that I'm representing here today, is a very good forum to explain and to use this opportunity of bringing these two issues together. 
In spite of technical innovation, Techniki, innovacja, wara, pach, it must not be forgotten that the, yeah, this traditional censorship also works for the internet. Sensor, uh, sensor and it is important to note that freedom of the media on the internet must be defended also offline as traditional forms of censorship such as harassment or imprisonment of online journalists or physical raids of editorial offices do apply for online media too. Attacking journalists or bloggers, as I said before, is a direct attack on freedom of the media. In this country, only I had to react on numerous occasions in order to raise my voice and in order to express my concern for certain people that were imprisoned and intimidated in Azerbaijan. I always welcomed open door policy by the Azerbaijani government and a constructive and frank approach. We had in all our interactions bizim bütün endemali ünsiyetlerimizde bu özünü göstermiştir. Because my office was mainly established in order to assist aslında ona göre yaradılıp ki governments of 56 participating states yardım etsin, kömeğe etsin ki when they have problems to comply with the media freedom commitments they media azadlığı meselesinde problem olanda onlara kömeğe etmek istedimi karşı It's not only Azerbaijan, it's too many participating states arresting, intimidating, imprisoning journalists, bloggers, activists. As we speak, in so many, in too many of 56, we have this problem. As I said, in relation to the cooperation with the Azerbaijani government, I can once again stress that it's ongoing and it's quite successful. I will mention several names that I raised my voice previously, and it's wonderful to see some of these people here, and that they are all free, beginning from Enula Fetulaev, Enullah Fethullayev'den tutmuş. Bahtiyar Hacıyev. Bahtiyar Hacıyev. Cabar Savalan. Cabar Savalan. Emin Milli. Emin Milli. Adnan Hadizade. Adnan Hadizade. And recently Zaur Kurbanli. Zaur Kurbanli. That was released after 15 days. 15 günden sonra o da artık kazatlığa bırakıldı. I cannot say how happy I am to know that they are free and able to continue their important work. And I use this opportunity once again to thank the government for the cooperation with my office. But this is hardly to be enough. In order to see a real success, this needs to stop. This, you know, this practice is something that should not be practiced not only here, Devam but in any other of 56 participating states in the region that I cover, but not to mention beyond, not to mention issues that my colleague Frank LaRue is covering. At this moment, there are several people in prison for different issues related to, to free media and free expression. Again, not only here, in too many participating states. And once again, my role is to make sure, or at least to try, with the help of civil society, with the help of this wonderful, courageous people around the globe, trying to fight for freedoms. But we can only do it together. When I say together, I mean together with the government. We need to, to fight for our freedoms jointly and not against each other.
The UN Human Rights Council has decided to continue its considerations of the promotion, protection and enjoyment of human rights, including the right to freedom of expression on the Internet and in other technologies, as well as of how the Internet can be an important tool for the development and for exercising human rights. Again, it sounds wonderful, and it should be used by all of us. I will certainly join the Council in this endeavor with the activities of my office, defending an Internet whole and free is a continuous struggle that needs to be led both online and offline. I'm online, I'm the offline. This must be done with regards to regulation, technical infrastructure, security, access, and content. When it comes to internet, I will just mention internet one more issue, and this is not new, this is something that many of you heard many times, but this is something that I'm repeating to the governments of 56 all the time. When they were elected by us, by the societies in different countries, I do not think they were asked to use the power they were given by people in order to filter, filter our opinions and our minds. And this is something they should keep in mind when introducing legislation that can restrict and suppress free speech. And that in a way should provoke certain movements in the society. Because again, no matter how much you try to suppress and to restrict, it will come back to you. And all of this should be kept in mind. When the le legislations or yani certain filtering procedures or blocking procedures are introduced koyma, by the government. Of course, everything should be based on a rule of law. But anything related to free speech az, uh, azad, should foster free uh, speech and not restrict it. Azad ifadeye ve her karşı hayata çetilme, her bir şey bunu daha da inşaf ettirmeli, bunu demen mehduplaştırmamalı. And in no way, my office ben or I cannot talk on behalf of Frank, but I can, I can state uh, that we have the biz, same goals when it comes to freedom var. of expression. None of our offices is trying to introduce utopian uh, approach to human rights, issues related to freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Of course, there is a need for rule of law, but not a rule of law that will turn our societies back to dark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dunya. On behalf of Expression Online Initiative, and I would like to thank your office for all support for your willingness to participate in today's event. And I would also like to uh, thank Mr. Koray Targay, head of OEC office in Baku, for joining us today. We are now moving to the next session, which is about promoting human rights in a digital age. And, um, I would like to give a floor to Emin Husseinov from Expression Online Initiative to present recently produced report on the situation with freedom of Internet in Azerbaijan in the country which is hosting IGF this year right now. IGF is Azerbaijan's name. 
çok şadır. I'd like to very happy to see you here. Would like to greet all of you. Yani ki bir çoklar bize bu hesabı takdim edildiler. Eğer kime takdim edilemiyorlar, whoever doesn't have this report. Ben diyorum ki burada bizim emektaşlar onlara paylaşabilirler. Our colleagues have them, so you can pick a copy. Öz hemkarlarımızla birge, yani bir işçi grubuyla birge. Together with our colleagues. Bu hesabatı son altı ay ərində çox gərgin bir iş nəticəsində ortaya qoya bildik və məxsusi minətarlıq bildirmək üçün bizə dəstək verilən təşkilatlar var ki, bu açıq cəmiyyət institutu, international media support və national endowment for democracy onların dəstəklə bu hesabat təsəyə gəlir və xüsusi minətarlığımı mən bizim beynəlxalq həmkarlara bildirmək istəyirəm international partnership group üzvlərinə ki, onlar da artikl 19-dan tutmuş digər bizim beynəlxalq həmkarlar da bu hesabatda çox əmək həsr ediblər. Həmçinin də Azərbaycan tərəfdaşlarımıza da xüsusi minətarlığımı bildirmək istəyirəm. Burada İnsan Hakları Klubuna Rəsul Cəfər, Gülmərə xanım, o həmçin də media mərkəzini və international media supportun nümayəndəsidir. Rəşid Hacılıya, Media Yolları İnstitutu və xüsusi də minətarlığı bir də bu hesabat üzərində işləyən bizim iki International Partnership Group-un nümayəndəsi və artikl 19-un Rebeka xanım və Gülnaraya da çox böyük minətarlığı bildirilmiş. Mən istəyirəm ki, indi isə keçim bir əsas məktəbə Hesabatın adından da gördüyünüz kimi hesabatı çalışır ki, görək ki, bugün Azərbaycanda biz internet azadlıq axtarışında və nədən bu belədir? Mən deyərdim ki, bugün Azərbaycan vətəndaş cəmiyyətinin və Azərbaycan hökumətinin fərqli-fərqli baxışları var bu məsələyə. Azərbaycan bizi bir tərəfdən bu çox sevindirir ki, Azərbaycan hökuməti hər yerdə bəyan edir ki, bizdə internet azaddır və bunu onlar əks argument kimi çalışırlar, təqdim eləsinlər ki, misal üçün, beynəlxalq istimaiyyət onları ifadə azadlığı problemlərinə görə qınayanda bizim hökumət başlayıb demək ki, necə sizdəyiriz ki, bizdə ifadə azadlığı boğulur ki, əgər bizdə internet azadlığı var. Amma Azərbaycanda internet azadlığı problemləri həqiqətən var və ümumilikdə qiymətləndirirsək, Azərbaycan interneti azad yox, qismən azaddır. Buna qeyri-azad da demək olmaz, amma qismən azad buna demək olar və bunu həm bizim Expression Online İnşitivə daxil olan qurumlar da bu fikri dəstəkləyir. Həmçinin bir çox beynəlxalqımız var da bu fikirlər azadlar xüsusilə, misal üçün, Freedom House-un son internet hesabatını cənab Hanım Kortni bildirəcək bu məsələ. Amma mən bildirmək istəyirəm ki, bax, bu cür hesabatda biz 8 cildən, 8 hissədən ibarət hissədə biz həm çalışmışıq ki, qan vericilikdə olan mövcud problemləri, bugün internet legislasiyonu. İnternet disidentlərə baskılarla bağlı fikirlər burada əks olunub. Xüsusilə də texniki infrastrukturun hansı durumda olduğunu da göstərir. Biz hesab edirik ki, bu bütün qeyd elədiyimiz məsələlər bir-biri ilə bağlı. Hökumət bir tərəfdən qeyd edəndə ki, Azərbaycanda internet bloklaşdırılmır, amma Azərbaycanda internet dissidentləri həbsə atılır və bugün dissidentlər var. Bunların içərisində həm jurnalistlər, həm hüquq müdafiəçilər, həm bloggerlər də var. Və hər bir şəxsin həbs Azərbaycan onlar məkanında müəyyən daxili sensura gətirib nəticədə çıxardır. Əsas narahat edən məqamlardan da məsələ budur. This is one of the areas of concern and this is where and this is why we have included here. So I believe bugün Azərbaycan kifayət qədər böyük ötəliklərin var. Today Azərbaycan has sufficient quite a lot of obligations regarding the provision of freedom of expression but by In 2012, we have witnessed that information freedom 
capability in this world of international film Georgia G collection, especially in the legislation that have been changed and uh, uh, which really actually uh, uh, put in difficult position the journalists and they have uh, uh, this will have a difficult access for them, uh, difficult uh, access to, to access information. Uh, but after the changes, the government uh, are not obliged to share the, the information. So, technical infrastructure is not sufficient, even though Azerbaijan economic leader in the region Azerbaijan today in Azerbaijan. 3 million, 3 million and a half internet users in Azerbaijan, but actually but they have low quality internet access, we are still most of the internet users are using the dial-up technology, which is very old there, and internet fees are quite high, especially in the regions. Internet service providers, internet service providers there is no competition, and actually it's under the government's serious monopoly, you can see it over the last five years, the government has limited the technological development, especially mobile internet, but we are really happy to see that before the Eurovision, after five years, uh, the Ministry for Information Technologies uh, gave the licenses of 3G to all the operators. But today, the speed of the 3G is very low. My telephone says that it's connected to 3G, but if we test it here, you can see this is just a, a visual, visual. In reality, the speed is and this is one of the serious concerns as well. So it's a low level of infrastructure. This report, you can see it's one of the recommendations. I know the concern is about the legislation. In this report, you can see it, um, in Azerbaijan, actually, internet users, Azerbaijan, are based on some normative legal basis. They can, uh, for example, follow technically, but so please, uh, because we don't have a lot of time, so you, you can see there are like the chapters of this, uh, of this report, you can look at the details, so, but the, so the main areas, uh, we believe that in Azerbaijan there are a lot of opportunities to improve technologically to improve internet technologically and content-wise and yes, if there is a political will of the government, we believe that uh, if there is technical infrastructure, it's just only a matter of time, one year to improve the technical infrastructure, but for some reason it takes five or six years, maybe deliberately it's being delayed. And uh, another most concerning uh, issue is that uh, today the future of internet Azerbaijan, we don't know that the future of the internet of Azerbaijan, for example, we are not sure when we will have the quality of internet service. We really want to know the opinions of Azerbaijan government of whether it would be limited in the future or not, because uh, state officials sometimes are voicing some statements. Online television has to be regulated. Uh, they have to operate under licenses. Uh, um, but then, uh, but still, we believe that one of the most concerning issues that there is a dialogue building a dialogue between the civil society and the government. So the normal dialogue. So it's a lack of this uh, dialogue is one of our greatest concerns. I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to yes, uh, Azerbaijan going to listen to the local and international civil society 
internet infrastrukturunun inkişaf edilməsi improvement of infrastructure onları so to apply all of these recommendations that we have put in place I believe, I think, I wouldn't like to take more of your time now I'd like to conclude my speech. Uh, we have some guests or visitors that will also would like to talk about the problems in some other parts of the world or in, or in the regions, but yeah, we can also can go back to Azerbaijan. So we have a report. Thank you very much, Emin. Uh, we will have a chance to discuss this along with other issues after another interesting presentation. And this presentation will be delivered by uh, Courtney Raj, who is the senior advisor to Freedom House DC. Floor is yours. All right, I'm going to try to make this less painful than it will be uh, if I do my entire presentation, since there's a kind of consecutive slash simultaneous translation. But um, as you can see from the agenda, what I was planning on speaking about today was what's happening in the Middle East in terms of state attacks on internet and digital freedom. And obviously, I think it goes without saying that the internet, social media, and digital technologies have become crucial and central nodes in the circulation of information and essential platforms um, of participation, protest, and campaigning. And these medias have become a key battleground in the uprisings throughout the Middle East. And thus great attention, money, and time is being spent trying to influence and manipulate these arenas. Last month, Freedom House uh, released its annual Freedom of the Net survey, and out of eight Middle Eastern countries assessed four ranked partly free and four ranked not free. Um, similarly, four Middle East countries made Reporters Sans Frontières top ten list of internet enemies, while another three are under surveillance. I want to focus on strategies that governments are using in the Middle East region to restrict internet freedom. Um, these are not unique to that region, but they're certainly leading the way as we see that activists are leading the way in using social media and the internet and digital technologies to protest their government and to work for political, social, and economic reforms. We also see that, um, that governments are coming up with key strategies to attack online and digital freedoms. These six key strategies are technological, legislative, offline intimidation and attacks, cyber assaults, content manipulation, and surveillance. And I'll also talk about how gender plays into these attacks and how women, in particular, face particular forms of violence. So although censorship of the internet, um, as well as surveillance of online and mobile activities, was present in many MENA countries prior to the uprising, there is now more proactive manipulation of content online as governments hire pro-government bloggers and tweets, which are Twitter users, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, um, to promote their view point, discredit opposition activists, and disseminate false or contradictory information about events unfolding on the ground. And as a result of these more sophisticated um, strategies, it's become more difficult to distinguish between credible information and propaganda. Public trust is therefore undermined by conflicting accounts of, uh, of reality. And government methods of control are evolving, particularly spurred by a desire to tamp down on criticism ignited by the Arab uprisings. And these strategies are often less visible than they have been in the past. And so several of these strategies for dealing with cyber activism are censorship and blocking, surveillance, phishing and monitoring, manipulation and propaganda, arrests, attacks and torture of cyber activists, as well as individuals who post online information that is critical of the government and seeking to counter the influence of cyber activists and online media. 
So social media is an integral and essential part of contemporary social movements, and so documenting regime brutality, documenting the events on the ground, posting footage, narratives, etc., is a crucial part of activism. And, of course, states have clearly caught on. So whereas prior to the revolution, the Egyptian government was largely absent from the social media sphere, they really, Mubarak did not have a Facebook page for until very late into the game, didn't really use Twitter. The SCAF and the Muslim Brotherhood are the exact opposite. The SCAF would release its press releases on its Facebook page first. The Muslim Brotherhood has long used the internet um, realm to bypass structural uh, restrictions on ownership of media um, under Mubarak. So they're, they're able to communicate and shape public opinion. Um, citizen journalism is a particularly powerful form of cyber activism, and social media is helping citizen journalism compete and bypass the structural barriers like state-dominated mainstream media and self-publish and disseminate information without having to go through the institutions of the nation-state or the filter of the journalistic field. And this is game changing changing in much of the Middle East and frankly in much of the region, similar to Azerbaijan, where you have most of the broadcast media, most of the media, certainly all the broadcast and print, which is um, state-dominated. And so social media is now the platform on which the cat and mouse game of rep regime repression and political activism is being played out. But it's becoming more sophisticated and, um, and more dangerous. So of course we've seen the blunt approach used by Egypt, where it just shut down the entire internet and mobile phone structures, um, but we've also seen that being used in Iran, Syria, and Bahrain on a more local basis. Um, and just as a side note, Azerbaijan, uh, we suspect, slows down internet connectivity in the region to prevent um, people from uploading YouTube videos, etc. So it's certainly, again, not limited to the Middle East. Um, and so the goal becomes to prevent citizens from spreading information. Um, but they're also I think yeah, governments I really know, learned from the Egyptian experience as well that I'm shutting I'm down the internet actually then does not allow you to surveil and track those activists. activists. And so now they prefer to monitor these digital activities and digital contacts rather than trying to prevent them from going online. And so whereas prior to the uprisings, governments would just block a site, a site or a platform or arrest a cyber activist. Now they employ very sophisticated surveillance and tracking. In Syria, social media activists have been kidnapped and tortured for their passwords, and they and their families have been threatened if they dare to change it, which has enabled the regime to continue monitoring their activities. Similarly, in the United Arab Emirates, um, where I used to work as a journalist, and no doubt elsewhere, the police monitor social networks and blogs. So talking about technological strategies, in Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Syria, the government has blocked political websites, imposed complete blocks on social media platforms, including Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, which are, of course, the most popular. Um, and they often are using technology that's been developed by the United States, by European countries, as well as China. So this is a problem that, d that democratic countries also need to pay attention to. And they're increasingly seeking to block specific content and pressure internet yeah. service yeah. providers yeah. and intermediaries yeah. to assist in the censorial apparatus and frustrate attempts to circumvent censorship. Yeah. Syria has periodically shut down the internet Suriye'de and mobile phone internet, networks mobile as its uprising continues, as has Bahrain. In terms of legislative strategies, as user content explodes, governments have introduced new laws to try to regulate online speech and prescribe penalties for those found in violations of the established rules. Um, the threat in many countries comes from laws that ostensibly are designed to protect national security or cybercrime but which are so broadly worded that they are really used to um, against political opponents. So, for example, in Saudi Arabia, an online media law requires that all news websites, potentially including blogs and social media sites, register with the government. Um, a similar law is, uh, in Jordan uh, requires that 
that media websites register with the government and that that they register with the Jordan Press Association. Um, The government can censor content. But we've also seen that activists are able to respond by blocking out several popular websites, for example, in order to raise public awareness, such as the U.S. activists did in the SOFA and PIPA debates. In terms of personal... Okay, sure. In, ser- in terms of personal intimidation and attacks, uh, the governments of Bahrain, Bahrain Egypt, Syria, the Emirates, and Jordan have intensified censorship, intimidation, arrests, and violence against bloggers and cyber activists in hopes of quelling public calls for political and economic reforms. Um, in Bahrain, the moderator of an online forum was killed in police custody and another uh, blogger remained missing. And several cyber activists and journalists have fled into exile. In Saudi Arabia and Syria, in- individuals have been reported being tortured in custody because of their online, because they were detained for their online activities. In Bahrain, just recently, Nabil Rajab was arrested for a tweet he sent that was deemed defamatory by of the king. And blasphemy laws are increasingly catching up social media users who dare to express their personal opinions or personal thoughts on God or the lack thereof. So, am I going slow enough? Yes? Okay. (laughs) Um, In Libya and Syria, citizen journalists who had gained international prominence for their live online video casts were killed and targeted attacks by government forces, and social media activists continue to face extreme threats in Syria. But even in Egypt, uh, several well-known cyber activists were seriously injured during police and military assaults on protesters, and it does appear that they were singled out for filming events, that they specifically targeted people with cameras and with video cameras. Um, so, for example, it's very interesting that at a UN gathering like this, we've been told that we're not allowed to take pictures. Why is that? Because pictures, images are incredibly threatening to authoritarian regimes. Cyber assaults are another tactic. Repressive regimes are attempting to wrestle back control of agenda setting and framing contests that they used to really have dominance over because of their control of mainstream broadcast media. And so now they use what I term cyber assaults against online activists. And that's using harassment and intimidation online to defame or dishonor these young people through the use of cultural framing, sectarianism, and taboos. The Bahraini government has been particularly sophisticated in its attempts to counter the cyber activist narrative through the use of pro-government trolls. I don't know if there's a word for that in Azerbaijani. <laughs> um, hashtag bombing <laughs> and surveillance, along with good old-fashioned news blackouts. So hashtag bombing refers to the hijacking of a Twitter hashtag, um, which is used like today, IGF-12 is the Twitter hashtag, and they just take it over and um, most often these accounts have few followers and they were just created to attempt to discredit these pro-reform activists and they'll often just take over so who knows we'll see some Bahrainis probably if you guys are using the hashtag Bahrain start to tweet against us here at the IGF um, because we're talking about these things and so um, there are hundreds of these trolls, and the human yeah. rights community suspects that American public relations are, what firms are, what are, what have been involved in developing, if not implementing, these strategies. Content manipulation and surveillance uh, is another technique that states are using. So they're increasingly using deceptive tactics to manipulate online content and discussions, seeking to frame key issues, counteract criticism, and discredit activists. So in some cases, they've hijacked um, the the online presence of their 
critics. Um, in, in online, other online, cases, online, in Jordan, online. for example, um, Amman News, a popular website, was hacked. And sensitive uh, uh, statement by tribal and leaders and that was calling for reforms was forcibly, forcibly deleted. Um, fake Twitter accounts have been created in Syria, in Egypt, in the run-up to the elections. Um, a Facebook account for for reporting on electoral violations was hacked. Uh, we found in, in Egypt and Libya, we found evidence that there was extensive surveillance um, on levels that we had really no idea how extensive um, their and sophisticated their monitoring was. And Tunisia as well, I th we had a better sense of what uh, the level of sophistication was. But now the question is, where is that monitoring equipment? Where is that the equipment of censorship and surveillance? Um, and that's something that we need to really uh, keep, keep track of. And one of the most troubling things, as I mentioned earlier, was that U.S. and U.K. firms, along with Chinese firms, were uh, involved in selling the surveillance software to those countries. So, for example, Finn Fisher and Dark Comment, Dark Comet Rat have been found in Egypt, Bahrain, and Syria, and Syrians in particular have been targeted. Uh, several Trojans, including one that was disguised as a Skype encryption tool, which is supposed to keep activists safe, was covertly installing spy software onto infected computers. Um, the prevalence of these malware programs makes internet security and surveillance awareness, of course, a crucial necessity for cyber activists. And just to conclude, I want to mention one really troubling approach that states are using in the Middle East, which is to specifically target women. Um, first of all, there is a gender gap in Arab women's use of social media, so they're only about 34% of Facebook and Twitter users, which is not representative of the population or other trends. However, they, s they face specific threats and violence from regimes that their male counterparts do not. So they have faced torture, they have faced attainment, character assassinations that specifically exploit cultural taboos in which female victims are seen as having brought dishonor upon themselves because of their online activities. They face sexual harassment in the virtual public sphere and they become the subject of defamation campaigns and they receive threats on their social media profiles. So for example in Bahrain and Tunisia as well as Egypt where women have played a crucial role. Um, they have been exposed and defamed. Um, the blue bra girl that many of you may remember um, was physically assaulted and then videos of her in her bra were circulated um, all over. We've seen uh, in Bahrain that the police and security forces have been accused of threatening women, especially cyber activists that they've arrested with rape to force them to sign confessions. So one cyber activist named Asma Darwish told me that she left Bahrain um, in January and had received threats of rape and murder. Another woman you may have seen, this young poet who got up and, and gave this poem during the February uprising against the, um, against the monarchy, was arrested and threatened with being raped and sexually assaulted with degrading photographs of her being put on the internet. Similarly, Tunisia's Lina Ben Mahni said she was harassed and threatened on Facebook and her blog. So this, these specific threats of sexual violence and humiliation and talking about taboo subjects like sex um, are designed to debase women while reinforcing gender inequality, cultural taboos, and social ostracism. So just to conclude, with, inter uh, with internet penetration rates skyrocketing, internet social media use expanding exponentially, and the demonstration media. effect becoming ever stronger, 
Both the state and the opposition will need to continually update and revise their online strategies. Intensified censorship, arrests, and violence against bloggers and online users have increased in the wake of the Arab uprisings as authorities have sought to quell public calls for reform, even though some countries like Tunisia have experienced significant improvements because of political openings. But we we have to remember that many of the improvements that we see in Tunisia, in Libya, and elsewhere have not been codified by law. There are improvements because of the lifting of negative, um, negative impact. So the increases in physical attacks and violence against Internet users and cyber activists simply underscore the futility of conceiving of human rights as platform-specific Well, that's scary. The trends the governments used against the cyber activists and some of those trends are quite familiar to us. Uh, is there any window of possibility? Is there any light? at the end of that tunnel. We are having the presentation by John Kampfner, who is the former chief executive of Index on Censorship, and who is currently uh, worked as uh, external advisor to Google on free expression and culture. And he is also works for uh, Global Network Initiative, GNI. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I will keep my remarks brief. That's usually the prerogative of the person who goes last to um, really uh, pick up on the points that have been made so far in this event. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for um, a very strong uh, discussion so far. It is particularly heartening that this discussion about human rights in Azerbaijan and around the world, the principles and the practices, is taking place here in Baku. And I would particularly like to thank Dunya for her remarks. Um, they were forthright, they were um, they exactly, in my opinion, represent um, where um, governments, where corporations, where civil society um, should all be heading. I'm very grateful to you, Dunya, and associate myself very much with your remarks. Um, just uh, to say that I bring uh, a long career in uh, international and UK journalism to bear and, and more recently in civil society. I'm uh, acting as an external advisor to Google and GNI, so I speak to them and not for them. So in this regard, my remarks are in a personal capacity. Um, but first of all, just with regard to um, the GNI, um, we're absolutely uh, delighted to announce uh, this morning um, that uh, Emin's Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety uh, is now a member of the Global Network Initiative, uh, which is a very important uh, development, uh, we would argue, for Azerbaijan and for internet uh, development around the world. Um, the GNI, for those GNI, who are not uh, familiar uh, with it, brings together GNI, corporations uh, um, with civil society investors, investors um, and academics um, based in Washington, D.C., but increasingly internationalized. It's um, founding uh, uh, corporate members were and remain uh, Google, Yahoo, Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft. Or Microsoft or. Um, with uh, Facebook uh, yeah. recently joining Facebook as an observer. Now to the uh, to the issues um, at hand. The question that I was asked to talk about was where internet policy touches upon human rights issues um, and at the risk of uh, being brief. The answer is everywhere. Um, as Junior pointed out, there is no part of internet policy from the most arcane and technical to the most everyday to the most philosophical that does not in some way uh, relate to human rights issues and its subsection, the freedom of expression. Um, 
the GNI is, we GNI. would argue, a um, uh, small but growing and um, strong representative of um, the multi-stakeholder model. Um, in which uh, decision making is not left to governments alone, in which inclusivity, transparency and vigilance are central. And with that in mind, obviously where we are this week, um, the IGF is really the trailblazer in this regard. Um, for all its difficulties, in some ways the cumbersome nature of of the event and the organization and uh, sometimes the difficulties in, in getting things up and running. It is um, the best that we have on offer and um, the best way to uh, improve internet governments, in my opinion, is to continue the process of improving and modernizing the IGF. Uh, with that in mind, I obviously uh, share the concerns uh, aired this morning by Dunya and by uh, so many others um, about um, the uh, events and the discussions that may take place in Dubai in a month's Dubai time da, at, uh, uh, Wicked. Um, um, the ITU, um, ITU in its uh, run-up to uh, the negotiations has uh, shown itself not necessarily to be as open as it should be in terms of bringing civil society on board. In so doing it, um, not only uh, plays to the fears that have long been held, but it does not presage well for the discussions in a month's time. Nevertheless, those discussions will be had and will be uh, engaged with by all concerned as vigorously as possible. Um, just like to uh, raise um, various uh, points uh, relating to the ITU, that one of the more seductive or attractive um, questions underlying um, uh, the ITU and its, and its claim to, um, to speak for um, uh, the, the global internet uh, world is a sense of equalizing out um, internet representation, um, which obviously through the origins of the corporate world and uh, the invention of the internet were skewed heavily uh, towards the United States and then to Western Europe. The issue for me is not the uh, question of uh, which countries, um, uh, the issue is not um, the relationship between countries, important though that is, and important though that may be in terms of the modernizing of internet governance. The issue is the relationship within countries. What we are seeing, as we've heard from several presentations already this morning, is what I call the repatriation of national sovereignty when it comes to internet governance. In many ways, the, the one of the biggest fears is the transborder, the transnational um, allure of the internet, the democratizing horizontal uh, global uh, uh, philosophy behind the internet is at every turn being undermined by this renationalization, for want of a better term, of the internet. And with that comes, as Dunya has pointed out, uh, but in the words I would use, um, a race to the bottom in terms of countries almost vying with each other when it comes to blocking, to filtering, to surveillance and um, to other questions.
mesh tut I would say the only area um, in uh, from which I would necessarily I, I would slightly take issue um, in from uh, our otherwise excellent keynote introduction um, was uh, the optimism um, expressed um, about the potential outcomes I think the developments over the last several years um, are extremely worrying in terms of uh, yeah. internet uh, the approach to internet governance and it's not just that it's also the approach of society at large we also in my opinion appear to be having a race to take offense um, we are elevating offense almost as a human right in itself I have the right all the time to be offended by what you say uh, online, offline, online, on Facebook, yoktur, offline, on Twitter, on your Facebook, blog. Twitter, de neyse um, kimse, elbette ki burada this is more than uh, a governmental tactic. This is a broader societal question, but from Mesela which governments benefit. Adeden, e, and this is something um, that internet users should be extremely careful about. Um, we are seeing it not just famously in the Middle East, we are seeing it uh, in many countries, um, we are seeing it in pivot countries um, such as uh, India and uh, Brazil where recent trends um, are extremely worrying. I'll conclude on two broad points and then obviously it will be thrown open to, to further discussion. The first, um, with regard to internet policy makers, internet, uh, I would uh, urge uh, very much um, a, a recalibration in the argument and about freedom of expression away from the old paradigm of 20th century dictatorship. I worked in several of them uh, and I was fully aware and a witness on a day-to-day -day level um, the way those governments operated. But there are actually extremely few that would nowadays, in 2012, fall into this category. Certainly, uh, fewer than you could count on the finger of one on, on, on the fingers of one hand. Instead, what we have is the new and the more recent phenomenon of 21st century authoritarian regimes that operate in a much more subtle, in a much more clever way, particularly with regard to freedoms online. The threats posed to freedom of expression are no less acute, but often, not always, but often the measures taken are more subtle, and the language, the diplomacy and the engagement should recognize not just this cleverness and subtlety, but also the difference, uh, the just as important a threat, but the difference of that threat. It is, I would differentiate between what I call private freedoms and public freedoms. And what the 21st century variant increasingly is giving, particularly those that adhere to a strong technical access to the internet, to broadband and uh, to telecommunications is the facilitation of communication among citizens in which they are encouraged to uh, exercise uh, their freedoms but in a way that does not affect, does not intrude into the public realm. Public freedoms, which are much more uh, politically uh, honed, much more politically sharp, are quite different. And what is uh, clever is of about a lot of the 21st century variants, and I cite Singapore as the model for this, is the decoupling of private and public freedoms. And in terms of internet govern governance and broader human rights policy, uh, that is, in my view, an approach that needs to be taken on board. And my final point is um, an appeal um, not to see internet human rights policy in black and white, but also to focus very strongly on double standards, uh, in my case back home, um, in uh, Western governments, uh, in their application of um, restrictions on the internet. As Dunya pointed out, um, in all the areas where 
um, security is threatened, um, child pornography, child abuse, uh, harassment, terrorism, security, and elsewhere. Governments do have uh, not just the right, but an obligation to provide the right environment for uh, the safe activity of society. However, governments should also uh, bear in mind not just whether or not they go too far in the application of those principles in terms of filtering, surveillance uh, or other forms of restrictions on their own societies, they should also strongly bear in mind the effect of their domestic policies on other countries, most particularly authoritarian nations. And time and time again, I say this with reference to my own country, the United Kingdom, which is currently in Parliament debating, um, and a, I think, that I, I would use this word advisedly, a pretty extreme uh, communications data bill um, that would allow unrestricted uh, surveillance uh, access by government to all, not just email, but social media traffic involving UK citizens and any other citizen that they come across. Not only is that a piece of legislation um, unjustified, wrongly drafted, uh, far too vague, far too future proof. Um, uh, uh, for any uh, to meet any uh, sensible human rights criteria but it is also manner from heaven it is also the perfect foil for authoritarian states because whenever the Russian government the uh, Chinese government the Syrian government the Azeri government is met with complaints about a piece, a particular action when it comes to internet restriction. They increasingly say, well, I really don't see why you're complaining. You're doing something similar yourself. Now, I am not making uh, a statement of moral equivalence. Please don't misunderstand me. There is fundamental difference between governments uh, with checks and balances, with uh, strong separations of powers, and those that do not have them. But I am talking about the moral, almost the bogus moral space um, that Western and other uh, democratic governments are perhaps inadvertently giving to authoritarian states. So with that appeal for all countries to abide by um, the uh, strongest human rights appliance to uh, proof test human rights against any form of otherwise justified restrictions on the internet. Uh, I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, thank you to all speakers. We are now about to give the floor to our audience. So now it's time when we are taking questions, comments from the audience. And for this particular session, I would like just to pass my mandate to a colleague, Avri Doria, who is IGF expert and who is also engaged with um, Association for Progressive Communications, ABC. Thank you. There have been some very interesting talks. Heard some of them. Apologies for being late and missing some of them. And, and now it really is time. And, and what, what this talked about was recommendations for academia for each day to promote uh, and implement human rights. Now, one of the things that the IGF is about is messaging. And so what I'd really like to, to invite people, and hopefully we have a microphone that, that moves around, 
ki mikrofon olsa daha iyi olacak. Hamadan sonrasında insanlar burada that not only go out from here to the wider audience, but our messages that people can take with them to other sessions. And as one of the things that I did hear said was that human rights touches on all internet governance. I might go one step further and say that human rights is probably the most important issue that we're talking about in internet governance. So with every other session that people are going to during these next four days, taking these messages, messages of your own or messages you hear from others in this room into these other sessions, and when you get a chance to speak, speaking them is, is something. So I'm hoping that people can come up with relatively short statements of, of what would be a message, a recommending message that you would take into the rest of the IGF meeting and hence from there into larger, in, into larger uh, internet discussions. So is there a microphone to pass around? Or does everybody have to come up to one of these microphones? There is a microphone. Okay. And so I guess we'll go from hands to hands, and I'll try to move around room. Please, please say your name if you can. Please say where you're from and who you work with if you can. If you can't, say you can't. And please, who wants to be first to, uh, to, to give us a message that we should take? Okay, there's one down there. Somebody can get a microphone. And is anybody transcribing these? Are these messages getting written? Somebody is transcribing. Good. Okay, please. Thank you. My name is Fungait Changana. Fungait Changana. I'm here with the Freedom House delegation. Uh, I don't have a message. Uh, it's a question. Some of the presentations you couldn't hear everything. Is there a place online where we can access them? Online, we can see online. We can see them. Online, we can see them. Online, we can see them. Online, we can see them. Online, we can see them. Online, we can see them. Online, we can see them. I actually don't know because normally the sessions in the IGF are recorded and there are transcriptions. But since I don't see it showing on the screens here, I'm not actually sure if that's happening. Uh, can anybody answer that question? Uh, we organize video live streaming with Bamboozer and we send, if you give, uh, we have registration list with email and we send uh, forward to all of participants this video link and we upload this video in YouTube. Okay. Uh, I'll post my comments on my blog because they're kind of long and if you tweet me <laughs> at Courtney R, I can send you a copy. <laughs> my blog is raj.info. We'll have to find a central way to put all this information so that everybody from here can find it. Okay, the next was the gentleman there with the white paper. Hold, hold your paper up so people can see. No, you need a microphone. You need a microphone. Men. <coughs> Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I represent the newspaper <coughs> Azatlıq. I'd like to thank the organizers of the event. And I'd like to, to report about the present status. When I was a child, there was a Hamlet play in Shakespeare, but I couldn't really understand its drama of the Hamlet by Shakespeare because I was a child. Ama artık neçə aydı ki, Azərbaycanda ən popüler siyasi qəziyyət olan azadlıq məhz Hamletin dilemmasının bütün dramatizmini yaşamaqdadır. Çünki biz elə ölkədə yaşayırıq ki, bu ölkədə İspan diktatoru Franco'nun dostlara hər şey düşmənlərə qanun şuarı başlıca bir 
you have everything for, for, for your foes, it's uh, legislation. So the political, the most political the country is in a hard conditions. We have 66,000 euros penalty in court penalties. Problem uh, so the problem here is that Thank you. First of all, we, we lost the translation at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, ask people because there's probably a lot of people that want to speak to please keep the comments short. As the gentleman in the white shirt there was the first hand I saw previously. So please, if somebody can get the microphone to him. Thank you. Please yeah, uh, message and keep it relatively yeah, thank short. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Edmond Yakani. I'm, Edmond I'm from Yakani. South Sudan. Sudan. Groom House delegates. delegates. My message House is just delegates. only sort of message. I'm calling from here. Man, Let us start Edmond working on ensuring challenge. legal frameworks in our domestic laws. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for making it a message that people could take. Um, so I had another message. I had this gentleman here had wanted, please, a, a, a brief message that people could take away and do something with. Thank you. Uh, my name is Osman Gündüz. I am the head of the Azerbaijan Internet Forum. Ve, e, thank you very much for such a productive discussion. I was in Tunis. Uh, internet idrarçı reformu bunu burası koyulandı. Ben o proses işte iştirak edildim. Ve biz de oradan da orada görürdük ki Azerbaycan, özür uh, dilerim, global internetin idare etmesinden bağlı bütün maraqlı tərəflərin, yəni vətəndaş cəmiyyəti, özəl sektor və dövlət qurumlarının iştirakından belə bir müzakirəyə ehtiyac var. İndi daha bu 7-ci ildi ki, belə bir müzakirə keçirilir və çox şadam ki, bu il bir Azərbaycanda keçirilir. Düşürəm ki, bu bizim Azərbaycan internetinin də, Azərbaycan internetinə də bir verilən qiymət ola bilər ki, məhz bu toplantı burası alınıb.
İndi mən daha yaxşı istəyərdim ki, məsələn, hansı maraqlı tərəflər deyirik ki, indi mən burada vətəndaş cəmiyyətini görürəm, amma çox təəssüf ki, bizdə özəl sektorumuz var internet məkanında, hansı ki, burada çox zəif iştirak edir, o cümlədən də dövlət sektoru. Amma indi mən düşünürəm ki, bizim buradakı mesajlarımız yəqin ki, maraqlı tərəflərə çatacaq. Dünya xanımın çıxışından bağlı, o cümlədən sosial media ilə bağlı, xanımın çıxışından bağlı bir məqam qeyd etmək istəyirəm ki, doğrudan da bu dəqiqə Birləşmiş Mütətlər Təşkilatının, sonra Avropa İnstitutlarının, digər beynəlxalq qurumların, internet society qurumunun, bu internetdən bağlı müəyyən rekomendasiyaları var. Və mən indi buradan bir mesaj vermək istəyirəm ki, mən düşünürəm ki, bu son dövrlərdə ki, bu sosial media daha ciddi inkişaf edir və cəmiyyətə daha ciddi təsir edirsə, mən elə gəlir ki, bu beynəlxalq qurumlar bu sosial mediyada iştirakla bağlı deyək ki, müəyyən tövsiyə edici sənədləri gücləndirməlidir. Məsələn, düşünürəm ki, dövlət qurumlarının sosial mediyadan deyək ki, effekti istifadə etsiz istiqamətində bunun bir qədər də bəlkə də məcburi xarakter daşımasından bağlı, məsələn, bu Avropa İnstitutlarının, beynəlxalq qurumlarının rekomendasiyaları daha düzgün olar sosial medianın üzərində. Məsələn, elə Azərbaycan sosial dövrlərdə biz bunu müşahidə edirik. İndi mən bir neçə problemə müsbətini bildirim. Mən indi bu hesabata qılasın, okey. Yes, I see her. İndi konkret tez şəkində deyə bilərəm ki, son 5 ildən müqayisə edəndə Azərbaycan interneti ciddi inkişaf edir. Azərbaycan internetində, Azərbaycan interneti mənim fikrimcə, xüsusən də Azərbaycanda sosial media açıqdır, şəffafdır. Burada hər hansı bir sosial, deyək ki, siyasi, ideoloji senzora yoxdur. Amma mən düşünürəm ki, indi mən bu hesabı atdım. Hətta qulaq asılam, Emin bəyin hesabatına. Mən elə gəlir ki, burada müəyyən rəqəmlər köhnədir və onun dəqiqləşdirilməsinə ehtiyac var. Xüsusən texniki infrastrukturla bağlı, xüsusən deyək ki, filtrasiya ilə bağlı və s. Mən burada bunun müzakirəsini açmaq istəməzdim, amma bir daha təkrar edəm ki, buradakı rəqəmlər köhnədir. Və bilicə şey deyim ki, Azərbaycan internet formu ki... Thank you very much. Azərbaycanı Prezidentin qızı internet təmsilərinin əsələrindən bəydə və yəni ki, bunu araşdırmaq üzə çıxardıqdır. Digərli isə internet provideri bilmirik ki, ona kim həmin sahibdir, həmin internet provideri. Bilmək ki, doğrudan da bu deməli təminatlı provideri kimi həmin. Məsələn, Ən azından bir nəfər var, Facebook-da yazdığına görə, məsələn, həbs alınır. Məsələn, Fərəməz Allah verdiyi, o rəsmi olaraq həbsdədir, Facebook-da yazdığına görə. O, öz zinat içində də belə yazılıbdır. Bu, yazmıyıb, elə bir şeydir. Amma onu həbs edirlər. Bir dənə də məsələn, əlbəttə ki, bəzi başqa misallardır, nəmələrdə var. 
hulliganizm and so on. Mesela hulliganizm adı altında da hep sağlıklar. Thank you. That's a very important message for people to bring in. No one from. Excuse me. Excuse me. One person at a time. Thank you. Um, no one from this side has spoken. The gentleman there. Yes, please. Uh, somebody, give him a microphone, please. We are. We don't have that many minutes left. No, it, it was. I am El. Okay. I am El the media Farzali. person representing media. Yeah, in the called New Idea in Media. I would like to Medya thank yeni the organizers for organizing this event. And bu I would like to express that I admire and welcome ben. the passion by which uh, the organizers have put the importance of the internet doğrudan. freedom. İnternet uh, azaltılığıyla bağlı doğrudan çok büyük uh, işler uh, görmüşler. Hem için de Azerbaycan'ın çok büyük işler görmüşler. Ama burada ben ne görmedim, ne onu görmedim ki. Mesuliyet hissediyorum. Elbette ki ifade azaltılığı internette çok vazif meseledir. Büyük imkanlar yaradı. Ama bir şey de yatan çıkartma olmaz ki. İnsan burada mesuliyet Meselesi. Bəli, internet burada bizim için okay. şerait yaradır. Ama, ama yeni vaxtda üzerimizde düşen məsuliyyat da yaradan çıxır bəzən. Ona göre de ad edin ki, bu məsələni nəzərdən Çok sağ olun, çok sağ olun. Texnologiya da bir şey var. Lack of freedom in internet. internet. Everybody can uh, express freely. Oh, and there are there are not, not really, not really. Another Please, thank you. Of having an internet expression right. Is that people? Excuse me. Thank you. You got a message. We, we, we got, I'm trying to pass the microphone on to other people. So, but you, I asked everyone to give one message. So please, you gave a message. I'm giving everybody a right to speak. Thank you. I have a couple more messages to say. We don't have that much more time. You no, I am. You actually got the microphone before someone else was supposed to. I have no agenda other than my only agenda is to get as many people to speak as possible. He spoke. He spoke. One message. One message, please. Thank you. I have three messages, but I will only tell you one. Social media or anything else, but Azerbaijan president has Twitter page, even though it's not interactive, but it's another problem. So if you're talking about Azerbaijan, let's not look at from other views, for example, let's not pick other models for Azerbaijan. So there will be other messages that I will tell you. Person in the back, right there, it's actually close. Give him the microphone, please. I think just short message. Uh, I'm a French journalist. I worked a lot in service technologies, and I would like to focus that in most countries where uh, people are monitored and censored, it's because they use Western technologies made in democratic countries. So I think Western and democratic countries have a huge responsibility on all those issues. We must control those technologies. Thank you. thank you. That was our last message. Our time is up. I thank you very much. The time is up. We've been told time is up. I only had a short time, and some people spoke for very long. Thank you.